This is Bloomberg Market Time. John Ehrlichman. The price of Bitcoin has started to cool off after a huge start to the year. Some suggesting the cooling is similar to some of the reasoning behind gold's pause. The advance had been driven in part by speculation central banks may shift to cutting rates after aggressive hikes. Uh, we did get some high inflation numbers in the UK, for example, this week, which may be a reminder that is a complicated narrative. But of course, there are a lot of things that go into what drives crypto prices. Our next guest is well-versed in all of them. Wall Street veteran Mike Novogratz has been building the TSX-listed company Galaxy Digital, which has several business lines tied to the digital currency world, and he joins us now. Mike, nice to see you. Thanks for your time. Very good to be here. Let, let's start with what your assessment of, of the Bitcoin move up, and now a little bit of a cool-off is all about so far this year. Yeah, we, we like it when it goes up a lot more than when it goes down. Um, listen, the year started with tremendous pessimism, right? It was coming off the frauds of uh, FTX and just a breakdown in confidence, really, in the crypto ecosystem. And I think we went into the year where if you had to sell, sell you'd already sold. Uh, there were shorts in the market. Uh, people had delevered. And, you know, there's a lot of people around the world that believe in these ecosystems. And so it didn't take a lot for crypto to start rallying. A part of it came from retail in Asia, right? The Chinese backed away from tech regulation in general after the protests uh, around zero COVID. And so we saw some flow there. We saw macro hedge funds here in the US participating. And, it, and as it got more clear uh, that the Fed is close to the end of the, the hiking cycle, close to the end of the head of the hiking cycle, right? Where we have a banking crisis in the US and a credit crisis crunch coming in the US, people thought, oh, here we go again, that, you know, crypto started uh, in 08, 09, as a response to the, the, the fear that the centralized system of banking was, was breaking. And now we've got a banking crisis again. So it kind of galvanized the story. Uh, we've seen lots of buying, you know, we've, we're up 75, 80% at the highs, and we're consolidating now. So we've come off from, you know, 31,000 to 28 and a half in Bitcoin and, you know, a little less in ETH. Um, and so it wouldn't surprise me to see us consolidate, you know, here a little lower and a little higher for a while until the next catalyst, which is probably when the Fed says, no moss, we're done, and we're gonna start thinking about cutting rates. And that I think could come literally as early as, uh, as uh, midsummer. So we'll watch that closely and look, I mean, we could, we could position you as the Bitcoin strategist and, and talk all day about that. But the, in reality, you're building a, a, a pretty robust business tied to, as I mentioned, the, the world of crypto and the ecosystem around that. Uh, and for anybody in your field, and we mentioned, obviously, you know, Galaxy Digital um, is, is a public company and, and trades here in Toronto, that uh, the sentiment shifts can be seen in stocks tied to the crypto landscape as well. What's been your view, like looking back, let's say over the last 12 months, Months because you had a lot to navigate as well. But I know you're always seeing the opportunity in all this, including within the business itself. What's sort of the biggest reflection for you at this point? Well, you know, one reflection which is interesting is that crypto stocks in the U.S. have actually rebounded pretty well. And in Canada, you know, we're the biggest crypto stock. We've certainly rebounded. We've come from three and a half dollars Canada to, to five. But if we had kept up with our U.S counterparties, our brothers, uh, or with crypt, you know, with Bitcoin and ETH, our stock would be trading closer to eight to 10. And so for, for some reason I haven't figured out yet, the Canadian retail uh, buying base and the institutional buying base haven't come back to crypto as enthusiastically as we've seen in the US. Um, I'm hoping that changes. Uh, you know, we think our stock is cheap, our business is growing. Uh, one of the advantages of having so many uh, poorly managed competitors is that a lot of our competitors went out of business. And so if it was BlockFi or Celsius or Voyager, or for the most part, Genesis, uh, the people we literally were, were vying for business with don't even exist anymore. And, and so we're getting a much bigger piece of a smaller pie. Uh, we're attracting great talent. Uh, our business, you know, through the first quarter, and we reported this publicly, you know, had made roughly $150 million after after expense. Um, you know, our book has 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 grown as investments have bounced back. And so I feel pretty good about the whole space. 
Uh, there's a regulatory headwind from the U.S. Uh, Gary Gensler has not been crypto's friend at all. Um, and the Biden administration has not been crypto's friend. And so we're seeing Hong Kong and London, uh, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, all vie for crypto business. And you have to remember, this is a, a global phenomena of their global coins. Uh, it's a global movement. And so, you know, despite all those headwinds in the U.S., uh, crypto trades really well. So just to zero back in on your listing in Canada, is there like a point at time if, if you feel like um, the shares are not uh, appreciating to a level that you think sort of better reflects what's happening with your business, w would you reconsider being listed in Toronto? Well, listen, you know, it's, it's, it's also public that we were in the process and continue to be in the process of of dual listing in the United States, of redomiciling from the Caymans to the US and listing on the NASDAQ where, you know, we think there's a whole lot more liquidity. Uh, the current SEC uh, with Gensler at the helm has not let any crypto companies through. Um, and so it's been a frustrating process. Uh, and again, you know, I don't wanna besmirch Canada. We got public on the venture exchange. It's one of the few places that are kind of tech forward and allow a, a small company to raise capital. Um, and I saw what it did with the weed stocks. Uh, it has not had the same resilience in, in crypto. And so we're going to spend more time up up north uh, talking to investors uh, and institutions to try to get some excitement because I think we're going to be in we're going to be in the Canadian markets for a long time, and so we need a, a little bit better sponsorship. No doubt. And uh, one of the stories that we broke here on BNM Bloomberg was some uh, exchange uh, consolidation within the Canadian landscape. And I think sort of one of the realities is the volume levels for crypto trading changed was, you know, you mentioned that regulatory reality. Costs for operators have been rising, plus volumes did take a hit after, you know, some of the exuberance died down. So now we have this deal between CoinSmart and CoinSquare and WonderFi. Although it's not, it's still not perfectly clear, you know, what parts of this new empire will look like in the next few months. As you're watching some of these changes take place, particularly in the Canadian landscape, you know, what, what's, what's, what's important to you uh, on that? Yeah, I think, I think they're going to be a whole lot less survivors uh, in the crypto world. Uh, it's expensive to run these businesses. The regulatory uh, burden is real. Uh, I look at what we pay for an audit, right? We have a big four auditor uh, that audits us both, you know, IFRS in Canada and, and gap financing as we get ready in the U.S. And it's three to four times what we'd pay if we were a non-crypto company. Uh, we pay double the audit costs of, of companies as big as, you know, Fanatics or Jefferies or, you know, really big companies. And so it's just hard to run a, a, a subscale crypto company. So I think you're gonna to continue to see consolidation and people go out of business, right? In some ways it's easier to own uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum than it is to, to run a big business right now, where in the past, you know, pre, pre the Fed hiking rates, there was so much money coming into this space and so much excitement. Uh, it was easy to fund these businesses with other people's cash. Uh, we luckily have a business that, uh, you know, on an operating business broke even in the first quarter, made money, uh, and has a big balance sheet, right? We have a one point, you know, six six five, one point six five billion dollar US balance sheet. And so we've made money to fund our growth. Uh, but if you're a company that's not making money to fund your growth, it's really hard to find growth capital. Well